Alright, welcome to our fifth and final episode from this series, and in this episode we're going to cover lipids, which is our second type of biomolecule. Now, lipids are very similar to carbohydrates. They're only made out of three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But there's one major difference. The carbons, the hydrogen, and the oxygens are not put together in a one to two to one ratio. So it's, if it was a one to two one ratio, we'd call the carbohydrates. So remember, CH and O, but not in a one to two to one ratio. What typically happens is you have way more uh, hydrogens than that two to one ratio. Now, examples of lipids are going to be oils, fats, waxes, and steroids. And when we, you know, you, we've heard steroids in the world of sports a lot over the last few years. Um, a steroid is basically a description of a molecule that has a particular structure, a couple of rings with a kind of a tail on it. That's what a, a steroid is. Now, no lipid is soluble in water. In other words, lipids are all nonpolar. Because if it was polar, it would dissolve in water. Right? So think of like oil and water do not mix. That's because the oil is nonpolar and the water is polar, and those two things do not like each other. Now, what's kind of unique about these guys is they do not have a real monomer. So you're not going to have the monosaccharides, disaccharides that you had in your carbohydrates. But I still want you to understand that to build a lipid, you have to use dehydration synthesis. And to break down a lipid, you still have to use hydrolysis. All right, so remember, to build a lipid is anabolic. To destroy a lipid or to break it down would be hydrolysis just like what you saw before, but we do not have the real monomers. Now, a typical fat, remember a fat is a solid, is a triglyceride. The tri refers to three fatty acids, and the glyceride refers to an alcohol called glycerol. So essentially what you have is you have a three-carbon alcohol called glycerol, and it can have one, two, three fatty acids attached to it. Now, luckily for you, we have a picture that explains that a little bit better. Okay, so if you look over here in the yellow, this is the three carbon alcohol called glycerol. One, two, three um, carbons. The stuff in blue are the one, two, three fatty acid chains. So if you think of a, of a lipid, it looks like a capital letter E, where you have your glycerol and a one, two, three. Um, fatty acids sticking off here. So that's what a, a fat will look like typically. Remember, fats are solid. And you see these double bonds in here? We're going to get to those and what they mean here in just a second. Now, this bond right here, eh, let's, let's, uh, let's do some writing in here. Okay, so you see that bond right there that's in red. And we'll draw this one up here. And we'll draw a string right up there. Okay? This bond right here in red, this represents stored energy. And this chemical bond was made by, you guessed it, dehydration synthesis. So let me get myself caught up here. Remember, dehydration synthesis, the dehydration means to take away water. Synthesis means to break. Or I'm sorry, synthesis means to make. If you want to break this lipid apart, in other words, break off the fatty acids, that would be done through a process called hydrolysis. Hydro refers to water. Lysis means to break. Using water to break it. You'd be putting the water back in. Now, fatty acids come in two flavors. Actually, they come in three flavors, but two of the flavors are related to each other. The first flavor is called saturated fatty acid. Now, the key feature of a saturated fatty acid in the hydrocarbon chain, remember, hydrogen and carbon can bond together to form hydrocarbons. I know, very unique. If there's nothing but single bonds, if you look right in here, single bonds between the carbons, that's going to be a saturated fatty acid. Because it has the maximum amount of hydrogen, in other words, it's saturated with the hydrogen. Now, saturated uh, fatty acids tend to be solids at room temperature. So, like, body fat would have a lot of saturated fats in it. So, here we got a picture of one uh, in a uh, fatty acid. 
If you remember back to your functional groups from the uh, second episode of this series, this is our carboxyl group, and that acts as an acid, C, double O, uh, double bonded oxygen, and an OH group, so it's a carboxyl uh, group. And this is the hydrocarbon chain. And you notice single bond, single bond, single bond, single bond all the way through here. And therefore, you have the maximum number of hydrogens. Therefore, it is saturated with hydrogens. It's a saturated fatty acid. Now, the other two flavors of fatty acids are, are unsaturated. What makes you unsaturated is you're going to have at least one double bond between the carbons in the hydrocarbon chain. And that double bond will get rid of two hydrogens. So therefore, you will have less than the maximum hydrogens, which will make you unsaturated. Now, a polyunsaturated fat, remember, poly means many. A polyunsaturated fat means that you will have many double bonds between the carbons. Now, polyunsaturated fats are a little bit more healthy for you because they have a tendency to be a liquid at room temperature. So therefore, we call these oils. So think of all your cooking oils. Those are polyunsaturated fats. Okay. Now, here's what happens when you have these double bonds in here. In a saturated fatty acid, the hydrocarbon chain, so this is your fatty acid right here. Uh, let's, let's label this up, okay? So the blue thing here uh, actually is your carboxyl group. I think I told you the wrong stuff here just a little bit ago. And then the yellow stuff, that's the fatty acid. So we're going to say, uh, let me rephrase that one, we'll get rid of that. Um, this yellow stuff here is the hydrocarbon chain. Okay, HC for hydrocarbon. So carboxyl group, hydrocarbon, fatty acid. Okay, this is a saturated fatty acid, and the hydrocarbon chain is pretty much straight. Now you toss in some double bonds into a satur unsaturated or a polyunsaturated fat, it's going to get all bendy on here. And what happens here is it makes it less dense. So see how dense these are? That's a solid. And you see how less dense these are? You see all this little space right in here? That makes it a lipid. Okay, so unsaturated fatty acids have a tendency to be liquids. Saturated fatty acids have a tendency to be solids. All right, there are four functions when it comes to lipids. And you know these are in color. You, mean, you, mean, you better know these. Number one is energy storage. Typically in animals, excess energy is going to be stored as fat, especially if you're an American. It's also the main component of cell membranes. In fact, a particular type of, of uh, lipid called a phospholipid. Uh, this is essentially a diglyceride. It has two fatty acids, but it has a phosphorus uh, group attached to it, of actually a phosphate group. They can also be used as chemical messengers. Chemical messengers are called hormones. Now, the type of hormone that's a lipid, those are many of your steroids. So think of testosterone, um, progesterone. Those are hormones that are steroids. And also the final function of a lipid could be a waterproof cover covering and these are what the waxes are. So if you think of like the top half of a leaf, how shiny it is, that's a wax on top of it and that's to keep the water from kind of soaking into the leaf and drowning the plant. Also if you look at bugs and crabs, they have wax around their, their outer shell, that exoskeleton. That's for waterproof coating, so they do not dry out, and it just makes them shiny and pretty to look at. Okay, so remember the four functions are energy storage, primary function or primary component of cell membranes. They are also used as chemical messengers, especially the steroids. And remember, chemical messengers are called hormones. And finally, as a waterproof covering, and that's what the waxes are. Okay, kind of another tough and difficult um, uh, episode here might want to watch this one again to get all the details. But until our very next series, we're going to catch you on the flip side.